many men wanted to marry Queen Elizabeth I. The Virgin Queen had many different suitors, and a number of them were obsessed with gaining power and wealth because of a possible marriage to the Queen. But Elizabeth died as the last Tudor monarch, as she never had a husband and an heir, and many believed that she was close to Robert Dudley, with the Earl of Leicester being her ultimate favourite. But there was one man who captured the Queen's eye, despite an age difference, and she deemed Robert Devereux the Earl of Essex as a very handsome and dashing young man. However, he would fly too close to the sun and incite a rebellion in London, which resulted in his brutal execution. Join us today as we look at the execution of Robert Devereux, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born in November 1565, Robert Devereux belonged to a noble family. His great-grandmother was the sister of Anne Boleyn, Mary Boleyn, and because of this he was a cousin of Elizabeth I. He was given a good upbringing, and he attended Cambridge University. His mother, Lettice Nollies, was a prominent member of Elizabeth I's court, until she married the Earl of Leicester of Robert Dudley, the Queen's favourite, and she was then banned from the royal court, and she never returned. But Robert had a career in the military, and he was taken under his wing by his stepfather the Earl of Leicester, and he went with him to the Netherlands, before he too came to court in 1584. He quickly became one of Elizabeth I's favourites, and he demonstrated his immense wit and intelligence, and was seen as a thriving young man. But within a few weeks of his arrival at court, the Queen was besotted with Devereux, and in the evening the pair would long sing into the night and play cards, and it was said he would not go to his own lodging until the birds sing in the morning. The pair enjoyed each other's company long into the night and were very close, despite the over 30 years age difference. But Elizabeth liked his dark eyes and youthful countenance, and their close friendship was a source of scrutiny at court. In 1587, Devereux became the master of the horse, and then the Queen passed on Robert Dudley's royal monopoly on sweet wines to Devereux, meaning he could make a huge amount of wealth importing wine through the taxes raised on it. He then following this was part of the English Armada, which sailed to Spain to try and hammer home the English naval superiority. But Elizabeth was a jealous woman, and she initially did not approve of Devereux's marriage to Francis Walsingham, the daughter of the Queen's spymaster Walsingham. He did have children with her, and the marriage initially was kept as a very closely guarded secret. Devereux had everything a courtier would want, including massive wealth, the Queen's eye, and a solid wealthy family, centred on royal court. He accepted a position of the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, as at the time the country and Ireland had been at war for around ten years, and no English commander had managed to bring the Irish to heel. Devereux led the largest invasion force sent to the country, around 16,000 soldiers, and he tried to end the rebellions, but this did not work. He told the Privy Council that he would go face to face with the rebel leader, Hugh O'Neill, the Earl of Tyrone. He travelled with his army south and fought a number of small skirmishes, but he could not establish control and spent large amounts of money. His failure to defeat the Irish caused him great shame in the Queen's eyes, especially as he made concessions to the rebels, and he then swore a truce with them. He tried to come back to England, but Elizabeth barred his return to court, however Devereux would not have any of this. He arrived at Nonsuch Palace, and then burst dramatically into the Queen's bedchamber, when she was not properly dressed, and the Queen was outraged by this. His antics in Ireland were seen as desertion and treason, and he was then held inside York House under arrest, but many people did support him. He was a controversial figure, and a commission of 18 nobles tried him and confronted him with charges that led to further house arrest. He was not allowed any visitors and friends to see him, but he was deemed as a traitor in the eyes of the Queen, and as time went on, Essex House, where he was now being kept, became a place of outspoken dissent against the government and the monarchy. Many people would give Devereux their support, and this resulted in a rebellion. On the 3rd of February 1601, a meeting took place at Drury House, in the presence of the Earl of Southampton. Devereux was not there, but the rebels spoke about seizing control of the royal court, the Tower of London and the City of London, in a rebellion against the Tudor Queen. The revolt, which became known as Essex Rebellion, decided to try and storm the city, and to then take control of the City of London, and they would burn down houses and also murder a number of Londoners. The key to the rebellion was to send a clear message to the government 
but they were not happy. Devereux was involved in the planning of this, and on the 8th of February 1601, he rode out of Essex House with the rebels. They were joined by many gentlemen and nobles, and they forced their way into the city of London. They tried to get a meeting with the Queen, but this was not possible. Devereux then seized four of the Queen's messengers and held them hostage, and they even tried to get the Lord Mayor, who was reading a sermon at St Paul's Cathedral. But warnings had already reached the Mayor about Devereux's actions, and he did manage to escape. But then Devereux's followers seemingly abandoned him, and were worried that supporting a traitor would lead to them being hanged, drawn and quartered. But because of this, the rebellion then fell apart, and Devereux went back to Essex House, and he then released his hostages. But the Queen's guards then captured his house and arrested Robert Devereux, who was actually burning incriminating evidence once he was seized. He was then brought on trial for treason, and his trial lasted one day, with a guilty verdict then being passed. It was obvious that he had raised a rebellion and uprising against the Queen, and for this he would be executed. The Queen turned her back on her former favourite, and the jury found him guilty quickly. He was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, but the Queen did allow a number of concessions. He was allowed to be beheaded instead, and because of his noble family, he was allowed a private execution inside the walls of the Tower of London. This spared Devereux a humiliating experience on Tower Hill, in front of the public who would be baying for his blood. He was held prisoner inside the Tower of London, but on the morning of the 25th of February 1601, he was taken to his execution in the scaffold by 16 guards and the lieutenant of the tower. His execution was to take place near to the White Tower, and he was to be beheaded within the same walls that Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were. His execution did not go too cleanly, and it was botched. A clean execution by axe, comprised of an executioner doing his job with one swift blow, but the scaffold had been created inside of Caesar's Tower, in one of the Tower of London's turrets. Executioner Thomas Derrick was the axeman that day, and Devereux whilst on the scaffold made a short speech to the witnesses, and he admitted his treason, and said he never wanted to hurt the Queen, and he wished her a long reign. But when Devereux went to the block, his head was placed on it, and Derrick stood with his sharp axe in his hand. But the first swing of the axe did not take his head off his body, and it then required a second swing. This did a better job, but his head still not could be separated, and because of this, it took the final third swing to take his head from his body. Robert Devereux was a slimy member of Elizabeth I's court, who would do anything to try and further himself in the eyes of the Queen. But his failings in the military caused him to be looked down upon by the monarchy and the government, and then he lost his way and became a rebellious young man who plotted against Elizabeth. He tried to force a meeting with her, but he was ultimately a man who was regarded as a favourite of the Queen, despite the large age gap. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.